Tubfix is a registered trademark of Platinum Pi Limited. In this video, we only show you the recommended installation for a Tubfix bath frame. Today, I'd like to show you the recommended installation video for a Tubfix bath frame. The frame itself comes in two packs, a front only and an end. Today, we will show the installation procedure for a front and an end, but I'll also show you how to just do a front only configuration. The first thing we need to do is to get some tools together that will be needed for the installation. So we recommend a pencil, a tape measure, a 15 mil spanner, a pair of pliers, a power drill with a six mil uh, masonry bit, a Phillips bit, and if possible, a large and a smaller spirit level. We'll show you why a little bit later on. Now, the other thing that you may need, potentially, would be a hacksaw. Now, you will only need a hacksaw if you have a bath that is smaller than 1700. So if your bath is 1615 or 1400, then you'll need to cut down the bottom channel and the top locking bar, which again, I will show you a little bit later on. The great news about the frame itself is that it compensates for floors being unlevel, so you don't need to worry about that, and walls being out of true. So the first thing that you need to do is to open up your box. Now inside your box, you will find another box. And inside this, there is a little instruction booklet. Now within the booklet, there is a QR code. If you take a photo of it, or you scan it with a, a, an app, it will take you to this video, should you need it, at a later date. So just bear that in mind. If we take out the parts that we need, within our box, you will find a under edge bath support and some flange nuts. The first thing we need to do is to screw our flange nut onto our thread. Now the flange will be facing away from the rubber top. So we do that by hand. And then at the bottom of our box, you'll find four upright members. And we're going to, by hand again, start screwing into the top of the upright members. Now, in the top of the rubber, you will see a Phillips indentation. Now, it's purely here for speed purposes, so that we can use an electric screwdriver with a Phillips bit in it, and we can very quickly and easily screw down. Now, just a little tip, if you hold your finger on the flange nut, when you screw your thread down, the flange nut will automatically stay in position. So we're going to screw those down to the relative height of our bath. Now I'm going to do all four of them and we'll pop back. So that's our uprights all now done. I've removed the rest of the metal work from the box. You will find within the metal that there's a couple of extra pieces, the wall upright and the joining piece. That is for front frame only configuration and I'll show you that a little bit later on. The first thing we need to do is to get our spirit level, put it up against our bath, get that dead level, and then we can mark the floor like so. And we will go along and do the same along the rest of the bath. Now, if you have a laser level, you could join up those marks and you'll get a uh, a line there. If you don't, then just use your spirit level, join up those marks and physically draw a line with a pencil. We've got a laser level here, so I can turn that on. Now this laser level will give us the front edge of the bath. Now what we need to decide now is how much we're going to set the frame back from our mark that we've made on the floor. Now this will depend on your finish. If you have a standard bath panel, then just measure that and you'll know you need to set back the frame accordingly. If you are going to tile, then use a tile backer board or a cement board. It doesn't have to be uh, that thick. Um, 
but you, as you see, we've got one here. And with our board and our adhesive and our tile, I know that I have 12 mil here. So, in instances for this installation, we're going to set back our channel 12 mil from the front edge of our bar. We have two bottom channel pieces. The longer one will go against the wall. The little locating point closest to the end of the channel will be the center of our bar. So we're going to put that there. And on the other end, the smaller bottom channel with the lots of locating points. Now the locating points are here for if you do have a smaller bar. As I said earlier, you can cut down with a hacksaw to a 16, 15 or 1400 that's marked on the bottom of this channel. But in our instance, we have a standard 1700 uh, bar, so I don't need to do anything. The same as if you had an 1800 bar, you won't need to use uh, cut that down at all. So I'm going to put that, so with the locating points closest to the end of our bath, down on the floor. Again, we have an upright here. This is for our wall upright. So the wall upright sits in the bottom channel and we will screw onto the wall 12 mil back from our laser mark. If you don't have a laser mark here, you can just uh, go with a spirit level up the wall to get to the front edge again and then set it back accordingly 12 mil and that will screw onto our wall. So once this is in position we can mark with a pencil the points that we need to screw down and then we can remove that. If we have a masonry floor we will use a masonry bit, drill a hole and a plug and uh, then we can put screw the bottom channel back down again. Just a tip on a tiled floor, if you don't want to drill into a tiled floor, for instance you may have underfloor heating close by, you're not sure, because the bottom channel is flat, you can with a suitable adhesive put along the bottom channel and put that down in position and allow that to, to set. We do provide the screws in the pack that are 18 mil thick. So the majority of floorboards will be fine, but just bear in mind, you don't want to obviously compromise any services that may be under potentially thinner floorboards than, than the screws. So just double check that first. So I am now going to screw that into place. We will screw the upright of the wall and then we can come on to the position of our uprights. So our bottom channel, as you can see, is fixed solidly in place now, and I have started putting the uprights in. So they will just literally sit in position on those locating points at the bottom. So we have one here, one on this locating point, and then one on the end locating point there. What we want to try and achieve is just for the uprights to just be touching under the edge of the bath, just so they can hold themselves in position. We don't want to be lifting the whole bath off its feet, so they just really want to be touching like that. Now if you mark, um, I have a spirit level here, but you could actually just even use a, a, an odd scrap of wood and mark 12 mil from the front edge of it, 12 mil back, and we put that on our upright, and our 12 mil we just want sitting at the front edge of the bath. So we know that they're absolutely vertical because we've set back the bottom channel by also 12 mil. We don't need to worry about the vertical position this way because we will now come on to our joining bars that will join all the uprights together. Our shorter joining bar 
one with the open end, as you can see here, will go underneath this screw on our wall support. Under the first, under the first flange nut and under the second flange nut. Our next one, the longer one, now again, these have cutouts that correspond with the locating points at the bottom. Again, 16, 15, 14, for smaller baths, you would cut that down. For a 17, 1800 bath, you don't need to do anything. And that will go under our middle, and then our third, upright, and then our last end, upright. We screw down the flange nuts by hand, tight, like that. We can now just check that we have a dead vertical position. Of course, our wall might be slightly out, so we can just move that accordingly uh, to get that uh, vertical. So there we go, we've got dead, everything is, is uh, in position, it's all perfect, and that's more or less the frame done. You would want to hold the screw with a pair of pliers just to stop the movement of the screw as you're doing up the flange nut with a 15mm spanner, and you'd want to tighten all of those up. Now at this point I just would like to discuss the front frame configuration only. This is where the extra two pieces of metal in, because quite simply, if I come closer to you here, quite simply that upright will go on the other end of the wall. We will put that on our upright there. We will get a flange nut, which I don't have to hand, and we'll screw that on and then that piece will sit under on the last positioning point. We have a 200 mil distance, so it does allow a, a reasonable distance from the edge of the bath to the wall, and that can be compensated with. You may even need, if, if your wall is right close to the edge, you might even need to move this up right back one, and then you can put that closer to the end upright, as you can see there. With a front frame only configuration, we would also recommend to get a little bit of silicon before you do them up, just lower those under edge bar supports, put a little bit of silicon on top of it, and then do it back up again because you do have the potential of the movement going that way with a front frame only configuration. With the front and an end, the end frame stops that, that movement, so it's not really necessary with a front and an end frame configuration. Moving on to the end frame, we will put that up, but it's exactly the same um, method as we've done on the front frame. So again, we will mark the front edge of the bath on the floor, we'll set it back by 12 mil, we'll put our channel on. Now the channel on the bottom, the locating point closest to the end of the channel, will go towards the end of the bath. And apart from that, everything will be done exactly the same. So I'm going to put the end up, and then I'll just show you how you join the end and the front frames together. So the final piece of the jigsaw is our corner piece which will join the front and the end together. Now there's different points for different widths of bath, so a 7, 750 and an 800 bath. We've got a 700 so that's going to go into this position here. So we slide that on our front and then on the end. We just need to now do up the two nuts. Now we need to then tighten all of our nuts up, make sure they're very tight with a 15 mil spanner. The way to do this is to hold the thread, that just stops the thread moving as you're tightening the nut itself up. 
and you'll do all of those along there and that is the frame complete. But before I go, I just would like to talk about the finish and how to put the finish onto the framework. So the type of finish, well, the majority of baths will probably have a standard bath panel. What we recommend is by using a suitable adhesive or even silicon, a blob of silicon on the uprights and then push your bath panel on and allow that to set. Just with a small amount of silicon, it means that if you ever need access to services under the bath, it should be relatively easy to take the bath panel off. Now the other finish, of course, is a tiled finish, as you see in all the glossy brochures. It does look fantastic, but generally people do shy away from that finish because of access problems. Well, here's what you do. With your tile backer board, cement board or water or marine ply as we discussed earlier. You put a line of silicon on this upright, this one and this one, and then on the last one here, a blob of silicon and on the wall, a blob of silicon. You cut your board so that it falls down the center of this bar and you adhere that board onto those uprights and then you cut another section of board out that will slot into that section there. Now when you tile, you tile out from the centre of this bar, like so, and then grout the rest, but silicon up the line here and around the edge, and that's it sorted. And if you need access then, at a later date to the services, all you need to do is cut the silicon around and with relative ease, take off that section of board because it's only been held on by a little blob of silicon. And that's the way you have access with a tiled finish. So I hope you like the framework. If you do, please let your friends know and also give us the thumbs up would, would be great. Thanks for watching the installation video.